You see how we pass one another? That's our lives. <laughs> he works in Sacramento all week, and so we're always just like, whew. Good morning and happy Memorial Day. Cam, thank you for reading that tribute for Memorial Day um, with such heart and tenderness. And um, I hope you took that in and, and felt the, the honoring of those that have served all of us, and we get to celebrate freedom today. So um, this interesting talk about leap from planning to action, we've explained to you several times that it is the intention of the overall Centers for Spiritual Living to have a theme that goes throughout the year, and, and that's why we have these banners up about living our values and um, this month, it had to, the theme had to wrap around creativity. So each week, Reverend Mary and I kind of took some of their ideas that they wanted us to share. And mine is leap. <laughs> I know. I know. Leap. And uh, Charlie goes, well, that's cool. Leap. And he's, you know, he's trying to leap. And, but the person that put this talk together, it's an acronym. And I thought, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with this. So I kind of took it off on my own, on my own. So I leaped another way. Because leap to me always is associated with a leap of faith. How about for you, leap of faith? And so we're talking about our creativity and the stirring of the divine inside of us, always stirring trying to get us to wake up to a new idea inside of us that is brewing and stirring for creativity and to take action on. And so the part, there is that, that small space where we are invited then to take our first step, right, into action. And that is the vulnerable space, a space where we allow our mind to tap into maybe some self-doubt and I know that one very well. So some of the words from Ernest Holmes, he speaks to this from creative minded success. To know how to think is to know how to create. And this power to create through thought is the execution of my will, the divine will in you. Manifestation of my being, the divine being through you. Because you are some part of me, the divine, and you have the power to think and to create. So when we settle into that great knowing that we are in union with the one, it's the two most important steps of our prayers of heart. God is and I am. And we can know that for others, but when we really need to sit with that in our own heart and soul and to say, God is, I am. God is, I am. I am being called to action. I am being called to create. And he goes on to say about your spiritual power, the divine spirit is not limited, nor does it wish to limit us. Its whole intent is to give us a more abundant life. The time has come when religion must be made practical and when faith in the invisible must be consciously developed free, free from dogma, superstition, and fear. So that's the beauty of this teaching. That is the beauty of spending time in class, in counseling, in practitioner work, in fellowship with one another, to find your true self, to find that part of you that is longing to create and longing to be the expression of the divine. And finally, he says, you exist, so this divine feeling this fire, this imagination, this creativity may be expressed through you. The spirit comes to you with a new and fresh creativity. You need not ask what others have done, and that's very important. So many times we're stifled because we've seen someone that we think can do it better, but God's stirring inside of us. There's no doubt why you are stirred into action, why you had the idea as well as someone else. Your unique way is being called upon by the divine at this time in our planet to come forth and to be and to act. 
So the Spirit comes to you with a fresh and new creativity. You need not ask what others have done or how they have done it. Be yourself. Express life as you find it. Don't try to imitate. Just trust. Just trust this self, this deep abiding self within you as you. Find the self in God. Do your spiritual practices. Do service. And find yourself in God and God in the self. So heavy words, a heavy call. We sometimes uh, come towards a to a practitioner or a minister and we say, I don't know my purpose. And yet you do. You knew it since you were a child. I can remember as a young child wanting to go tell President Eisenhower, I just wanted to talk to him for a few minutes. That's how old I am. I wanted to just sit with him and tell him how much we wanted peace and how much if we needed to build a underground uh, safety tomb or whatever they're called, I bomb shelter, yeah, bomb shelters, and we had all these exercises in school. How many did that? Buried your head under? Yeah, didn't we? We grew up on that fear. And I didn't want to do that because I, I was in anguish at night trying to figure out how to do it in the dog's yard, and then who do you close the door on? If we built it, who do you close the door on? If somebody from another street tried to come into ours, would there be enough room? I, I struggled with that. I struggled with that, and now it's back again. It's back again, this Russian thing. And so it's stirring inside of us, the little child that was confused and had fear and wanted peace, for me in particular. And so what is the divine call? What is the divine urge, longing to be expressed? What is yours? Mine is to speak peace, to, to stay centered in an understanding and a philosophy that makes me responsible, that makes me stay on this side of judgment. And it's very challenging in these times. So Emmett Fox from Sermon on the Mount says, all day long, the thought that you occupy your mind with, that secret place, as Jesus called it, is molding your destiny for good or evil. In fact, the truth is that the whole of our life experience, the whole of our experience is but an outer expression of our inner thought. So that's where I started to really research these days before I was allowed to come to speak to you and offer these teaching. And it was from the Aladdin Factor and the Jack Canfield and Mark Victor Hansen put together a whole bunch of wonderful lessons about this aspect of creativity. And he, in their writing, came together and put these testimonies of part of it started with the barriers to asking. And I might not get through them all, I will continue it at the 10.30, but there's barriers to asking. What stops us? One, and this is what Ernest Holmes says, is our greatest sin is ignorance. And when I first heard that in a, in a class, I thought, oh, that seems so rough. What a word, ignorant, ignorance. But he goes on to say, we don't know what we really want. Do you? Do you really ask what you want? We don't even know what we really need. And especially, we don't really know how to ask what's available and what's possible. We get out of touch with that question. We forget to keep asking every day. One of the things I appreciate about Charlie is he's a question man. The kids will call me or my mother or somebody and and he'll say, what do they say? And I'll, I'll make a comment. He goes, oh, and then he'll ask wonderful, wonderful probing questions about it. I says, I don't know, but I wish I did. I don't know. I wish I'd asked that. And I realized a long time ago I quit asking questions. I don't know why. I ask them inside my own head. But asking, ask the questions. And so I, when I go through some of these, I invite you to, to ask the questions 
and speak to somebody. When you have table topics with your friends, let's not go down a complaining path, but let's go into an inquiry path of finding, a, finding our way. It's so uplifting and it's so awakening. So we got out of touch, and, and I blame it on some of those years of slothful living. That's what I called it for myself. It's with our unattended sorrows. We got tired of, of some of those sorrows that dwell within our heart, some of our regrets and some of our beliefs. We just didn't tend to them anymore. And this is what is so powerful about the practicing the presence, is what Eckhart Tolle is trying to tell us. It's what Jesus was trying to tell us a long time ago. When we look at that span of time, it's what every um, enlightened master is trying to tell you to practice the presence. And what is the presence? It's dwelling within and finding what bubbles up and question it. Is it true? Is it absolutely true? And when you can sever those cords of suffering, you're set free. And you're acting as a divine conduit then of the one. You're not tethered to the past, to the old ways. And in particular, I appreciated this programming by our parents. Now, we've spoken to this before. But where do these beliefs come from? And remember, they're some of the ones that we just forget to tend to. So see if this resonates with you. I was conditioned away from asking by my, I was conditioned away from asking by my parents. I remember my grandmother used to give me money. When she gave me money, I was supposed to somehow resist it. It was part of the game. My parents would say, don't take money from your grandparents. And my grandparents would say, no, 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 take it. Outside, you say, no, no. And inside, you really want it badly. The grandparents would put it in your sleeve or down your back, and finally you would say, oh, okay. <laughs> that was the game. I remember one day I went to my grandmother's house, and because she had given it to me all the time, I said, Grandma, can I have some money? She looked at me and said, Tim, don't ever ask for money. I was shocked. I was a little kid, and it made sense that if they wanted to give me money and I wanted it, that I could ask. But that was the ethic. This unspoken morality where kids were to be subservient, they were to be seen and not heard. We didn't count for much, I guess. So you can see as a young child those planted seeds. And you know what? They operate today. We're afraid to ask for a raise. We're afraid to put a mount on that, some of us. Some of us are bold and have gone beyond that. But think about these, these seeds that are planted in you. And here are some of the, the mothering or fathering or grandparenting or from teachers. See if any of these resonate with you. Quit bothering me with your whining and your questions. Ow. Quit bothering me. Quit hounding your mother. Leave your grandmother alone. I don't want to hear about it. I don't have time for that right now. Oh no, not you again. What do you want now? You're so selfish. All you ever think of is yourself. Now watch when your heart gets a little bit of a ping. Okay, I'm not trying to bring up your suffering. I don't want you to go to therapy after this, but I just want you to, to try to find the, the, well, that was one of mine. You mean that's not true? No, these are not true. You, you never consider anyone's needs but your own. It's my way or the highway, young lady. As long as you live in my house, you'll live by my rules. If you don't like living here, you can leave any time. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. When I want your opinion, I will give it to you. Hurry up. We've got a lot to do today. I don't care what you want. Just shut up and do what you're told. If you just keep your mouth shut and follow directions, everything will turn out fine. Do as you're told. Any of those sting a little bit? This is from a collection that they found really operated through many people's lives. And you know what? They're innocent moments. They are so absolutely innocent. So we've been programmed. And these are the seeds that lie deep in our subconscious. This is the work. This is why when we ask, we know we shall receive, but it is done unto us as we believe, and that's where these beliefs start to stick and sting, right? 
Because if we don't address these, that which the divine is longing to pass through us as an instrument of the good, it is filtered through some of these belief systems that we have left unattended, that we became slothful, we quit questioning. We just let them lie dormant. If I don't pay attention to them, they won't bother me. All you need to do is turn from them, bless them for the wisdom at the time, but they don't operate you in you anymore. Kelly Rizzi is always, um, she'll say things like, if she finds one stirring inside of her, cancel clear. You'll hear her say that sometimes, cancel clear. And I thought, well, how brilliant is that? When it comes up, cancel clear. It's a limiting belief, and it no longer serves us. So that the first one, one of the barriers was ignorance. The second one was limiting our beliefs and the inaccurate beliefs. And there is the idea to ask the questions, to keep asking these divine questions. And here's a, a clever little story. A father and his small son were out walking one afternoon when the youngster asked, well, how does electricity go through the wires stretched between the telephone poles? How does that work? Don't know, said the father. Never knew much about electricity. A few box, blocks further, the boy asked, well, what caused lightning and thunder? Well, to tell the truth, the father said, I never exactly understood that either. The boy continued to ask questions throughout the walk, none of which the father could explain. Finally, as they were nearing home, the boy said, Pop, I hope you don't mind me asking so many questions. He says, of course not, replied the father. How else are you going to learn? <laughs> and so, um, but how often do we just never even take the time to answer our questions so we don't learn? So we can laugh at that, ha, huh, that father. But then I realize, hmm, I'm not spending the time to answer my own questions. The other uh, barriers are we feel like we might look stupid or powerless, humiliated if we take action. We have low self-esteem and the unworthiness. We feel that there might be a point of rejection. And then one of the last ones is that pride that fear of looking weak or judged so often that fear and I think one of those is is a thread that operates through me this fear of being judged and I'm, I'm trying to deeply figure things out myself these days I'm constantly researching and asking questions Gandhi in his wisdom says if you don't ask you don't get So are you asking? Are you asking the divine? There's a, on the, one of the film strips of Mother Teresa, some of you have seen that, we've played it here before. There's this brilliant scene. She's just a little uh, small lady, just real scruffy and, and uh, scrappy, and she was in this war zone, and she needed to get to the other side, and they say that's impossible. She said, no, it's not. God's on my side. And so they're going, what are we going to do with this lady? So they stopped the war so she could get to the other side. You know, it's that determination when you know that you have surrendered in such a way that you are the divine instrument of the one. That is the leap of faith. That is where we're asking each one of us here at the center to take action. To take action in our community, in our center, in your own lives, in your family, in your relationships, and with yourself. These classes that we'll be having this summer point you in many ways, many opportunities through writing and journaling, through exploring relationships and other classes, through looking deeply at your grief. Whatever it has been, your parenting skills, it's all asking you, question, question, and find your answers, find your way. You need to recognize that uh, we're not talking about a willpower here, we're talking about the divine, the divine will. We had a discussion on this in the practitioner class as they're preparing for their exam. You know, what is divine will? So what is divine will to you? We think we might know what that is, but it's a question to explore. Because in our humanity, we're all born with a certain level of will. You've seen the tantrums of the two-year-olds, that demonstrative will, those tantrums of getting our way. But then there's the divine will. And I find myself always turning. In my time of suffering, there is 
Something that Thich Nhat Hanh invites us to do also is to never, never diminish your roots of your spirituality. They were there, they were birthed in you, you were brought into the divine path through that way. So whatever it is, it is not your curse upon you if you're not happy with it now. Go back and find a taste of the wisdom that touched your heart. Mine was just loving uh, Bible study school. I just loved to wear flip-flops that day in shorts. I just thought that was the coolest thing. And did that make me any more religious? No. But what I learned was the Lord's Prayer. And I use that to this day. If I'm suffering, if I can't sleep, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. He is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. On and on. And then I get to that put, thy will be done. Thy will be done. And it becomes my mantra until I fall back asleep. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. What is that for you? Thy will be done. When you allow yourself to let go, to let go of those five ways of blocking, I don't know, Lord, but thy will be done. I don't know what I'm going to talk to you about today. I, I studied. I practiced. I don't know, Lord, thy will be done. That's my final prayer as I go to sleep at night and through the night, as I stir, I wrestle with a bellyache or whatever it is, thy will be done. Thy will be done. And your heart is so humbled, so pure. There is no doubt in that moment when Kim reads a, a poem or Charlie does a prayer, we're all one here and we're all speaking the divine truth. We're all arriving here today to be instruments of the divine. There is this idea to increase that personal power in you. Know what you want. Know what you want. Ask for it. Believe that you're worthy and that you deserve to receive it. And if something bubbles up that says, oh, no, not me. I did something. I'm so ashamed of something. We all are. We all are. Every single one of us, everyone's hand can go up if we had to go back and explore those roots of shame. But we didn't know. But what we need to do with those opportunities is take the gift, take it as the Lord would want, as that knowing deep within would want, and offer it up and say, I will do that no more. I rise up to the divine call so that I can be a clear channel for this truth and believe that you can get it. Be passionate. Take action even in the face of fear. Even in the face of fear. There's a story of my son. Uh, I still have this little note and it touches my heart every time I see it. It's rumpled up. It's from um, a hotel like the Hilton or something. It's all wadded up. And it's a note he wrote to his sister. Dear Lindy, I'm sorry you didn't jump off the diving board today, but someday you will. I know that you felt bad about that. I love you, your brother. And I'm like, ah, oh, he's just a little kid, writing that to the seed of doubt inside of her. She was clumsy with trying to dive off the side of the bed, and I'm thinking, this is such a cherished note. You see, if we had saved all those divine messengers all along the way, there's some teacher, some friend, some pet, some cloud, some inspiration that was patting you, saying, my beloved, go on, try again. You've got the courage. Face your fears. Learn from your experiences and be persistent. That's what we invite you to do. And each one of you, divine conduits of that, you're persistent. It's a Memorial Day weekend. You didn't go camping. You came here. You say, what does the divine have for me? Is it through a prayer, through a poem? Am I to sit in a sanctuary and remember all of the men and the women that have lost their lives? What is it for me today? What's going to touch my heart and wake me up? So we find our grooves of suffering. We focus on our good. And we allow ourselves to imagine, just imagine. That's the piece of creativity. Let us imagine a world just as John Lennon sang about it, of 
about the peace. Just imagine. And then let's be the instrument that walks with those divine footprints, with that sweet heart that asks others in your community to lift up your consciousness, to not dwell in media impressions or conversations that, that tear at your heart. Those are moments that your heart's being pricked into saying, not for me, I'm taking the high road here because God and I are one. And this is the divine pattern, the divine way. Give yourself permission to ask those questions and reverse those moments of feeling rejected. So know what free will is. Know that you were born with that free will and that opportunity to do as you please. But merge it with the divine will and watch your life experience just blossom and glow. Watch the opportunities penetrate your experience in such a way that, yes, I can take that leap of faith. I can now quit wallowing in some of my action plans and the not doing and say yes. There was an interesting clip going through Facebook at five seconds, counting down five seconds. Five seconds is that moment where you're wanting to do something so you're going to get up and go exercise, perhaps, something good for yourself. And then you dwell a little longer in bed. And then you just think, nah, you know. And then the mind starts to go, you don't want to do that. Oh, it's so warm and cuddly in here. And the cat's right there. You don't want to get up. There's five seconds there. But if you woke up and said, I want to exercise today, her, this was from um, a success talk. She didn't give her name. But five seconds, count down backwards. Five, four, three, two, one. She leaps out of bed and she's going, what happened? I don't know if any of you saw that. But is that, you saw that? It's that gap, that moment, where we don't let the mind dictate to us on the old journey because we got those grooves, we've got those patterns that are going to keep us from doing our greater good because it's comfortable, the cat's right there. But five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. So now it's like, I'm going, oh my gosh. Thy will be done, five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> thy will be done, thy will be done, five, four, three, two, one. Get up. Get up and be the divine instrument, the divine conduit. Be the one. Be the change. Take the leap. I close with these words from um, Ernest Holmes. Accept, I accept the action of God. We should daily affirm that the divine presence is everywhere, that it is always active in, around, and through us. The infinite power is always active, always dynamic, always creative. It is never passive, but it is moving in and through everything we do. Everything we do, it is moving. Just as one life harmoniously acts in every cell, every organ, every function of our body, so the one mind moves in and through every experience. So join me in this treatment from Ernest Holmes' heart to yours. There is one mind that governs everything, and I now affirm and accept that the same intelligence now governs my affairs. It is within me and around me at all times, directing, guiding, governing, controlling, and leading me happily to the fulfillment of good. It knows what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and I am impelled to act accordingly. I also salute the God presence in everyone I meet. And I know that as surely as I do this, the love indwelling them responds to the same presence within me. We act in the, uni in the unison of peace and understanding. Recognizing that all of life is the handiwork of God, I accept its love, harmony, now manifesting in every aspect of my experience. So go deeper, thy will be done. What is your question? Ask it. What is your purpose? Follow it. There is only one. And as you allow this love to permeate every cell of your being, every thought of your mind, as you allow yourself to pull yourself fully into present moment, what has been done is done. What is now is your future. 
So you give thanks for the opportunities before you now to love the one you're with, to lift the conversations in your friendships, to serve in your community with such heart and such pure intention that only good is made manifest. That's how you know you're walking the walk and talking the talk and being the one that makes a difference in this world. Take that leap. I give thanks for those that chose to come here today and let there be silence as my word stops and let yourself just indwell the spirit of the one. Let your heart be stirred and let those answers bubble up. Let there be a stillness that follows the moment I leave this stage. Let it stir in you the call. Five, four, three, two, one. And so it is. <laughs>